I think we can all agree that wasted time gone forever, never to come back is awful. And most people are afraid of that one mistake when they're cooking that takes all of their time and effort and throws it out the window. The problem is nobody ever knows what that mistake is going to be until it happens. Unless maybe you've worked in restaurants and you've had enough repetitions to know what those mistakes are. And thankfully I have. So I'm going to be showing you the 50 mistakes that anybody can make that will ruin your food and the solutions to all of them. Our first and possibly most heinous mistake of the day, not patting anything before searing. You need a dry surface to get good color. Anytime you sear anything, please pat both sides dry with paper towel, season, and then sear your food immediately. This one was dried off and this one was not. Exact same sear time, 100% a better product. Not utilizing acid. This has nothing to do with rave parties, okay? I'm talking about sherry vinegars, lemon juice, lime juice, citrus, whatever. Acidity brings lightness and diversity to the flavor of what you are cooking. And not enough people do it. Next time you cook, I mean anything, or you're making a sauce, such as this perfectly seasoned chicken jus. Add a little splash of something. A little bit of sherry vinegar, you can add to a marinade, you can add it to cooked vegetables or seared meat, literally anything. Taste it. That is the pop that makes you want to go back for another bite. Your mouth is watering. Starting your cooked sauces, vegetables, whatever with garlic. This is a very common mistake I see. Even I'm guilty of it. Sometimes you just want to throw it in there. You don't think about it, whatever. Here's the thing. Garlic has a high sugar content. If you're cooking onions, garlic, and all sorts of things, and you start with the garlic, there is a chance that garlic gets burnt before your onions cook. So do yourself a favor. In this context, cook your onions first. Then once they're cooked through, then add your garlic and cook that through. Through. Another option would be to cook it at the end. Problem, not following a recipe all the way through exactly. See this? Number one, you should get a copy. It's actually out now. It's my brand new cookbook. It's a New York Times bestseller already, thanks to you. The link's in the description. And it's the holiday season, and this is the perfect holiday gift. So if you're looking to get somebody something that maybe might get them cooking, this is the holiday gift guide right there. But this isn't about promo. The number one reason recipes don't pan out is because people don't follow every little step. They think, oh, I'll just make a little amendment here. No. The first time you make any recipe, just follow it all the way through. All the exact ingredients they ask for, follow the steps exactly. Then once you've made it a few times, then you can start venturing out and modifying it. But you gotta get your practice in. Overcooking your vegetables. Look, this is really simple. Most people, when they cook vegetables, they think, cook it until it's soft. That's not true. Just like a steak, sometimes a little medium rare is perfect. In this case, a little bit of crunch, not complete mush. So cook your vegetables to your desired taste. But things like Brussels sprouts, overcooking can actually bring undesirable flavors out of it. So next time, Try not cooking your vegetables as much as you usually do, and you might just be surprised. Mistake, using a dull knife when cooking. Common misconception, people think that a sharp knife is more dangerous. Wrong. If you have a dull knife, when you're cutting, first off, it's a lot harder, and you have to apply a lot more pressure to cut what you're doing. You're already in a more dangerous position. But in addition to that, it's easier to slip. I'm applying pressure, and my knife is able to slip off of this without cutting the potato. Your fingers aren't prepped for that, or it falls over, you're way more likely to cut yourself. Solution, use a sharp knife. Buy a knife sharpener. Just make it safer for yourself because look at this. You see how easy that was? No resistance. Much less likely to cut myself. Also, if I cut myself with a sharp knife, it's way better for healing than a dull knife. This rips and tears. This is a surgical blade. Not using enough salt or fat when cooking anything. Most things need more salt and more fat than you think. Remember that. A lot of the times when people cook, they think they've hit the ceiling with flavor and texture in their food. But oftentimes the bar is much higher and it can be reached by adding a little bit more salt or a little bit more fat than you usually would. Push the boundaries that you have in your mind and you may fly. That also applies to life. Not cleaning as you go. The problem is you keep getting more cluttered and more cluttered. I just finished cooking my steak, but now I'm about to make my sides. I got all this stuff here. If I keep going, there's just gonna be more for me to clean later. Dirty work surface, dirty mind. The solution, put your stuff away. Wipe everything down. Move things off the surface and somewhere where they can rest. Wipe off all your surfaces. If it needs cleaning solution, just do it now. Now I'm ready to move on not moving food constantly while it cooks. So this doesn't apply to every scenario, but by frequently moving your food around in the pan while you are frying or searing it, it will help with an even cook and even browning. See, if I didn't move these chips around that I'm frying, then they'd have different brown spots unevenly, but look how beautifully evenly golden these are. And they cooked more quickly. Another example, this is actually with toast. You guys see me doing this all the time. If you're toasting bread and butter, I call this the record scratcher. Little circles constantly, you flip it over, look at the evenness, the beauty of the toast on this bread. That is an industry secret right there. It's because you're constantly changing the heat of the surface area. 
not storing your food properly. Research the best way to store proteins, the best way to store fish, vegetables, fruit, because if you don't, things will go bad more quickly, you're more likely to grow bacteria, and also just generally, you'll lose the quality of the things you just spent money on. For example, we've got some grapes, some berries. We have fresh, lightly dampened towels on the bottom. It's gonna keep it moist, yet simultaneously dry. Sometimes I'll put a dry towel on top to keep it from creating condensation. Same thing in here. These are gonna stay good probably twice as long. Do your research and store things properly. Not cleaning your knife after every use. I think any home cook that does this will massively benefit. So for example, once I've finished chopping garlic, first thing I would do is grab a wet towel, wipe the entire knife carefully, and now it's ready to be used again. If you don't do this, certain steel knives will develop rust spots, but also it's just good hygiene. You won't be transferring flavors to all the different things that you're cooking that day. Mistake, not using the correct pan for the correct use. You ever notice there's a lot of different kinds of pans, stainless, cast iron, nonstick? That's for a reason. This nonstick wasn't meant to be used for everything, and neither was this cast iron or this. Eggs would be good in here, but maybe not so good in here. Yeah, sure, you can have four billion layers of seasoning, but it's still not gonna be as nonstick as nonstick. So make sure that when you're cooking, you use the correct pan for what you're about to cook. Not toasting nuts or spices. Of course, you can use your spices untoasted. I do it every once in a while. But toasting them intensifies the flavor and doubles the power that they have. You will never get the full flavor of a spice without toasting it. That also applies to these nuts. You can do that in a dry pan or a low temperature oven. It's up to you. Cracking your eggs like this. Really? First off, what did that do? Well, for one, you broke your egg yolk and there's bits of shell in there. How do you avoid it? Flat surface, tap, tap. You got a little indentation here now. Thumbs in. Now your egg naturally just splits right in half. Not pre-measuring your ingredients before you cook your recipes. You ever heard of mise en place? It means to measure and process all of your ingredients, make sure they are right in front of you and ready to be used before you start cooking. Oh, but Jessel, what about all the bowls? Oh, you have people to help you clean. You know who doesn't have people to help them clean when they meet stuff out? Chefs. Take it from the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of repetitions that I've done and many other people that work in restaurants have done. Mistake, following box directions like it's gospel? You should know better. This is something I think the Italians and I actually agree on for once. Different humidities, different elevations, different cooking apparatuses. Use your eyes and your taste. Yes, sure, you can follow the directions, that's okay. But check it as you go. Who knows, maybe the pasta cooks two minutes faster than it said on the box. Remember, you got instincts, trust them. Overhandling food. Look, I know I said continually moving your food around the pan can help me, you're going against what you said, Josh. Some cases, it's just better to leave what you're cooking in the pan alone. For example, you need a good render on fat or good crisp skin on chicken, just leaving it alone in the pan with constant pressure. I flipped it and we got nice, crispy, crunchy skin. No chewy fat, crisp. This other one got handled a bunch, but cooked the same amount of time. It got uneven browning and part of the skin is completely undercooked. Mistake, not keeping all of your tools near you while cooking. Okay, so you're cooking and then you go over here and then in here and then in, oh wait, I gotta go over here. Stop, we're not doing cardio today. Organize your kitchen in a way that most of the things you need are within arm's length reach. See what I mean? That brings me to my next point. This is a great way to do that. A big mistake is not keeping your most used tools near you. We talked about this in the Chef Hacks video. I'm bringing it up again because it is that helpful to have. If you keep your things in a container near you plus in your drawers near you, you're gonna cook twice as fast. Walking away from your food without paying attention. Don't act like you haven't burned something by accident. Look, the fix is simple. If you're gonna walk away, just set a timer or have a predetermined time to come back. Be aware of where you're at in the process of your cooking before you ever walk away from it. It's dangerous and obviously it could ruin your food. The problem, pre-prepped food. Anything that's pre-cut for you, fruit, etc. Number one, it's way more expensive. Number two, once you cut a vegetable, it slowly begins to die. You have a dying life that's been sitting in a grocery store for days, weeks, who knows how long? Just take the five f***ing minutes it takes to cut f***ing vegetables. It's healthier for you, it's less expensive. Also, it's better for the earth because you don't have all this plastic. Just cut your own vegetables. Not using softened butter when called for. I see this happen too often. Put the cold butter in there, you beat it around, and maybe one day it'll eventually soften, but it'll take significantly longer. So take the time to soften your butter. It will comply with your recipes instantly and incorporate it into things far more easily. It's time to stop using these. Yes, this is a cutting board, but don't use hard cutting boards like bamboo or glass. Why? The f thought putting on a piece of glass was a good idea. You're pissing me off. Although this is wood, it's very, very hard. And anything that's too hard is gonna dull your knife, potentially chip your knife. It's more dangerous to cut on. Instead, ugh, doesn't have to be this thick, obviously. There are really three main woods you wanna use on a cutting board. Either cherry, maple, or walnut. Here are their other materials. There's also Japanese sushi cutting boards that look like this. 
but let's just stick with wood for now. Using oil in your pasta water. Oh, doing this can very quickly ruin emulsified sauces. It oftentimes makes it difficult for sauces to cling to the pasta because now every piece of pasta you pull out is coated in a thin layer of oil. Stir it every once in a while, it's not gonna stick. Assuming you added it to actual boiling water. Problem, which apparently people aren't learning. Using soap on your cast iron. Why? That answer that for you? Granted, there are some caveats if you have a really thick seasoning on it. Using soap on your cast iron strips it of its seasoning, which means it will eventually rust and things will stick to it. You see, food sticking to the pan not only ruins the browning and the food, but also maybe if there's rust in there, I would assume that you might want to throw it away. But not the pan, the food. So make sure you just wash with hot water while it's still hot and it will look nice like this. See that shine when you got enough of that? Every once in a while, a little soap doesn't hurt, but take it easy. Not being precise in your measurements. If you're going to measure something, please do yourself a favor and just take the extra five seconds per ingredient to really analyze if you got the exact measurement intended because that is going to guarantee you an end product that likely will be what it was supposed to be. But also it helps you troubleshoot. If a mistake is made, it ends up being troubleshooting your mistake, not whether or not you measured it properly. Oh, hey, you making rice? You should all know this by now. It's not just me. It's Uncle Roger. It's the whole world. They all do it now. If you haven't caught up yet, it's time to adult the f up. Put your big boy pants on. I don't care if you're six watching this. If you don't wash your rice, okay, until the water runs clear at least two to three times, you end up with mushy rice. You ever make rice and for some reason it's just not as good as the wet one? It's because they just take two minutes to do this. So all I gotta do, put the water in, see how it's cloudy, and drain the cloudy water out. And then guess what? Do it again. Now the water's less cloudy till it runs clear. Using an apron as a towel to clean, pick up hot things, etc. <laughs> Look, number one, don't do that. Number two, use a normal towel. You know, a kitchen towel, a hand towel, anything but your apron. Not making your own stock. Oh, we're back at that combo again. 500 times the flavor. Granted, a little extra effort, okay? It takes a little bit more time, but you can freeze it and use it later. It'll make all of your food better. Store-bought stock is significantly less flavorful than homemade stock. And stock is the heart and soul of much of that flavor. If you use store-bought, this is essentially as close to water as stock can get. If you wanna add water to your curries, soups, broths, sauces, etc., go right ahead. But if you wanna add flavor, you use homemade. Never start a steak in butter. It never sears your steak that well. The butter burns pretty much instantly and you end up overpowering the flavors of the steak with burnt butter. Sear your steaks in a high temperature cooking oil or fat, then add it once the steak is almost at temperature and baste it to finish the cooking process. And just to clarify, we seared both of them going in the pan at the same temperature, one in oil and one in butter, and look at the difference. Not considering carryover. I'm talking when you pull a hot thing out of the pan and you put it on a board, most times it will continue to cook anywhere from three to five degrees over, sometimes even more. So pull your things just slightly under what you need them at. You need your internal temp at 135, maybe pull it at 133. Adding all of your ingredients all at once. If a recipe doesn't suggest to do that, don't do it. You're likely going to ruin the final product. So I've got multiple ingredients. I've got wine, I got cream, I got stock. I'm adding each of these one at a time, layering my dish, allowing each flavor to cook as intended before adding the next. If you've ever wondered why your thing doesn't taste like you thought it would, this could be one of the bigger reasons that is. How about rinsing your pasta? Awful. You do this and you're like, oh, I wanna like wash it off a little bit, get it nice and cleaned up, cool the pasta off. No, every time you do this, you're washing off all the beautiful starch that's gonna emulsify your sauce. Stop doing it. There's no reason. You don't need to cool the pasta down. Move on to the next step. If you're making pasta salad, that's the only excuse. Using pre-ground spices. Okay, there's some context where pre-ground might work, but understand that once spices are ground and then open, you lose a lot of flavor over time. So if you want the biggest bang for your buck, try to ground your spices fresh before using them. Random substitutions, because you think it's right. If you have a recipe, let's say you've never made it before, now is not the time to throw in a curveball and be like, I wanna add a little bit of this. Maybe instead of butter, I'll add some duck fat. Maybe you should just make it the way that it's written. This is the number one thing I hear when people make my recipes like it didn't turn out, but I replaced the butter with coconut oil. There are properties in each and every one of these ingredients. This, this all plays a role to make a final product. So don't make any substitutions unless you know what you're doing. Not controlling your temperature. People get used to cooking like they do out of a cookbook. Oh, set it to medium, and then what? What if your pan's a little thinner and medium is working for the first five minutes, but the back five minutes, it was too hot? Adjust. Let color guide your gauge. If you don't adjust your temperature as you cook, you're gonna end up burning over or undercooking what you're making. So use visual cues to guide where your temperature should be. Using jarred minced garlic. I know we have the pre-cut vegetables one. This deserves its own category. I know a lot of people use this and they're like, oh, it's fine. 
it's fine. No, 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 it's not fine. This is the surefire laziest way to completely demolish a great sauce, a great marinade, and so on. Just take the 30 seconds it takes to finally chop some garlic. It is slightly convenient, but you're saving like what, 30 seconds to a minute? And what you're losing by making that shortcut is a massive amount of flavor and health benefits of eating garlic. Like you ever go to a restaurant like, oh, why is it so much better here? I'll tell you one thing, they're not using this. Garlic is one of the best flavor components and you're missing it. Not using parchment in cake pans. This one I see happen way too often. And listen, this also applies to anything baked in a pan, not even a cake pan. I don't even like making cakes that much. So do yourself a favor. When you're cooking in any sort of a baking pan, spray it with a little oil and add a layer of parchment in that pan. Here's a little trick for you. How do you get a circular piece of parchment paper in here easily? Well, take a rectangular piece of parchment paper, fold it in half lengthwise, then again in half lengthwise. Now you're gonna look throughout this whole thing and you're gonna notice that every single point on this rectangle is closed except for one. Taking the long end, fold it up into a weird triangle thing like this, point the tip to the center of your circular cake pan and cut off the excess right where the edge of the pan meets it. Open it up, place it in, and look at that. Speaking of baking, you know, big mistake is when people don't set timers. I know you're thinking, Josh, it's so obvious, but a lot of people think their intuition can supersede a timer. One day you're gonna make a mistake and realize you're wrong. When you're setting a timer, do yourself a favor. Set it five minutes earlier than you think you need it, just to remind yourself to take a look at it, and then set another one. That'll save your life one day. Using metal utensils in nonstick pans. I feel like we all know this by now. If you want Teflon and chemicals in your food, then go right ahead and use metal utensils in your pans. So the fix is just use heat proof rubber spatulas or wooden spoons. Using the wrong fat for the wrong application. We don't deep fry in butter. Make sure you choose a fat that has a smoke point that can tolerate how you're cooking. If you're searing, high smoke point. If you're frying, high smoke point. Sauteing, you might be able to go a little lower, but think about that first. Things with too low of a smoke point will burn, the oil will taste acrid and bitter, and it will ruin the flavor of your food. Also, it's really unhealthy. That's a big one. Not generously seasoning your pasta water. The Italians are watching you closely. And although they may not yell at you like they yell at me, this is one thing I don't f around with. Your pasta will always end up feeling somewhat under seasoned if the actual physical pasta itself is not seasoned. So in order to do this, season your pasta water aggressively. It should be very salty. Some will say as salty as the ocean. Not using enough oil when searing. A lot of the time people think a couple drops of oil and it's good to go. If you don't use enough oil, you do not get a full contact sear. It is the diffusion of the heat in the oil that gives you that good sear. You develop more flavor, you'll cook more evenly. Here's a side by side with something that was cooked with enough oil and something that was cooked with, well, not enough oil. So again, make sure you cook the bottom of your pan with a full but very thin layer of oil. Under reducing a sauce. You want your sauces to be silky and luscious? Here's how. Let's say you're making whatever this sauce is. You sweat some aromatics, deglaze with red wine, and you reduce it. You add beef stock and you reduce it again, right? Generally speaking, reducing sauces should coat the back of a spoon. It intensifies the flavor, but more importantly, it coats your food properly. This is one of the most important things in cooking. It is one of the reasons why restaurant food is better, and it simply comes down to they waited a little longer than the home cook might have. Problem, not tasting as you cook. Got a little chicken jus here. Now, sure, it might have a little salt in it, but does it need more? Before you put this on a plate, don't you wanna just double check real quick? It takes two seconds. Little spoon. I always keep tasting spoons by me. Would you look at that? It's under salted. You see now, that little moment is gonna take the eating experience 10 times higher for the person that's gonna eat your food. They're immediately gonna go, wow, this is seasoned really well, it tastes so good. Because you just took the 30 seconds to taste before you served. Not resting your proteins. We talked about this in the 100 Chef Hacks. Both of these pork chops were cooked to the exact same temperature. One was rested, one was not. I cut it in half and you could tell a very clear difference. That one right there, that's been rested. It's not like one had less juice than the other. It's just that the other one is actually retaining its juice. That means the juice goes to your mouth instead of the board. You want it moist, you want it tender, rest your meat. Not preheating a pan or oven enough. This seems obvious. This is the leading cause to bad sears, poorly cooked vegetables, and generally bad cooking overall. Make sure your pan is sufficiently heated. There are two ways to tell, with a heat gun or by splashing a little bit of water in there. If it's hot enough, the water will actually beat up. It won't just evaporate. Looks cool, right? Using any salt for cooking without thinking about it first. There are many salts out there. You got flaky salt, you have fine salt, the really tiny granules, typically like table salt is fine. And then you have have kosher salt, which by the way, there's dozens, if not hundreds of different granule sizes, shapes. You got a little crystalline structure in here. I just seasoned myself just now. For example, if you season a protein with flaky salt before cooking it, you are insane. This is for finishing. I've said this many times. The perfect multi-purpose salt is diamond kosher salt. It is my personal favorite. I'm not branded by them. I would love to get paid by them. Flaky salt is for finishing. Fine sea salt is for liquid applications or baking. Not washing produce. That's right. I'm calling you out. I know you're not doing it, brother. That's gross. 
aside from leading to potentially deadly illness and poo-poo in your food. But another big issue is I'm eating a nice salad and then all of a sudden I crunched into the loudest, most aggressive tooth cracking piece of dirt or rock from a vegetable. So keep your produce low wash. Oiling grill grates directly when they're hot. Look, I'm guilty of this too, but when you oil hot grill grates, it burns and immediately oxidizes. So you're left with a burnt oil flavor. If you want a cleaner grill flavor, try oiling your proteins lightly instead, or if you're going to oil your grates, use a very high smoke point cooking oil. That way your grilled food isn't bitter and yucky wucky. And the last one, we're wrapping up. We're done. Wrong. Mistake number 50, not checking all of your dangerous appliances to make sure they're off. Is your oven off? Are your burners off? Maybe you have the gas running, but it's not lit and you'll know. You don't need me to tell you why you should do that. I'll give you a hint. It's life threatening. So what do you do? This is something I do every time with all my kitchens. I check every knob and turn them in the direction of off. Boom, 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 off, off, off. Oven's off, hand in the oven, it's cold, it's cold. Lights are off. Good evening.